Hey, this is Dan Beer with California Survival School. We're out here in Utah to run our 50 mile backcountry running primitive. It's an epic journey. And one of my favorite parts about this trip is teaching students how to do more uh, with less. So we are gonna show here a minimalist pack that uh, is a very traditional style. It's a blanket wrap. And you can wear it a bunch of ways around the waist, over a shoulder. And if it's really heavy load, you can even wear it around the shoulders over the back. So we're gonna go over that. I'm gonna get into it right now. Let's do it. All right guys, so blanket pack. Here we go, minimalist kit. This is what our students were allowed to bring on our five day, 50 mile primitive running expedition. So what we got right here, the first item is our linen cotton poncho. So traditional style, we spent a lot of time guiding down in Mexico. If you check out some of our Taramada Copper Canyon trips, they're awesome. The Taramada traditional tribe down there and they wear a cotton poncho a lot of times when they run around the back country is a little bit extra cover. So our students get one of these. For sleeping gear, the students don't take sleeping bags, they take ultralight liners. So all we have here is this ultralight liner sheet and uh, that's is what comes with them. Students had a choice between bringing either something with synthetic or silk, both for heat as well as for managing moisture. So we got one of those as a backup sleeping system. Students were allowed to bring a minimalist first aid kit, mainly for foot care. So if anything happens to the feet along the way, I mean, this is a running trip, so blister care is a big deal. I have some tape here for that. Uh, primitive cordage, this isn't actually one of the items they bring, but made, so uh, maybe check out another video for some intro on how we make primitive dog bane cordage. It's a pair of socks, if they need an extra pair of socks. A mag light for emergencies. We're kind of getting to emergency kit stuff right now, so we have a mag light for emergencies. The students don't use this on the trip unless it's an emergency. Uh, we have some backup uh, fire ignition systems. So you, with a good fire kit, you have both an ignition system as well as a fuel source. So lighters are my choice. Uh, there's a bunch of reasons for that. Maybe check out some other info that we publish on why. But I like lighters. Uh, one is none, two is one. So just uh, carry more than one source. And then we have a fuel source for me. I'm carrying a bike tire. It works great as a backcountry uh, fuel source. Burns long, burns hot. So this is one option that you can bring. Students were allowed to uh, customize what they wanted for their fuel source and ignition system. We allow sunscreen on the trip. These uh, stick bars that uh, are go on without having to squirt out uh, liquid stuff work great when you're traveling light and having to move uh, a lot with stuff all pressed together. Students were allowed four bandanas, so those came in handy for a bunch of stuff for carrying uh, stone ground pinole. The one food source students were, students were allowed to bring on the trip was some stone ground pinole, which is a traditional uh, ground up corn mixture that can be used either as a drink or for making cakes and stuff out in the field. So that's uh, what they're allowed. They're allowed a little small amount of that for their five day journey. And then a backup pair of shorts uh, aside from the ones they're wearing. And that's pretty much it, except for the clothes on their, their back, hat, your uh, your running shorts uh, shirt and your sandals or uh, running shoes depending on what you're using so this is their main minimalist kit all this gets wrapped up into a blanket pack so let me show you how that works so you just get that all tucked on here in a way that seems to fit and make sense i like to keep it snug and blanket packs they're magical because of the way they hug on the waist and i guess i shouldn't leave out the blanket they were allowed to bring a blanket either cotton or other sorts of material. Uh, I liked wool, so I went with a light wool during this part of the year. That can be a little hot, but I like it just in case. So we're gonna tuck in the end here. We have a five by five piece of cloth. This can also be used as part of the sleeping system or other sorts of uh, shelter needs. We just get it tucked up and we roll from corner to corner. That gives us a longer waist strap as we're trying to wrap, wrap this around us. I found these packs are magic, the way they sit on your body when you're running. It's super lightweight, it's, it's ultra minimal. And when you're in the back country having to move long distances, uh, this is the key. So these packs, once we have them all set, we got it all rolled in. I like to have the end tucks that's going down. It doesn't really matter, kind of personal preference. You just want it to be set in a way that it's not going to flap around. So first traditional carry is just straight on the back. You get it tugged in well kind of right above your hip bones, at least for me, that's where I like it. And then I pull it in tight. 
And the tighter you can get it, the better to start off because the knot loosens a little bit. And that's ready to go. So when I'm running with this thing, it sits right here on the back and it stays nice and snug. It doesn't bounce around. This is one of my favorite ways to move in the back country, especially from running. Other wraps sometimes used if your load's a little more bulky or awkward or you just feel like changing it up, we can go with a shoulder wrap. Also used all over the place. Indigenous cultures all over the world do this still. We've seen it throughout different cultures around here. So again, just shoulder carry if you're running around, switching it off occasionally when you're getting tired. And last but not least, we can get this as a two shoulder carry for really heavy loads. It's not too guys as early as last year down in Mexico where we do some of our trips to the Seri down in Sonora, uh, where I've seen guys walking on the highways with packs like this over the shoulders. It allows you to stay erect and have good posture. I've seen loads that look as big as cars almost of uh, just stuff, <laughs> whatever it is they're carrying, old guys. Um, so just travel like that, keeping it light on the shoulders, great way to go with it. My, again, my favorite for running, and like what we're doing on this 50-mile, five-day primitive, is just to keep it around the waist when I'm running. Now, in addition to that, I'll let you guys know what I carry as an instructor. This is a student kit. As an instructor, I have to carry a little bit more because we're offering people a chance to go backcountry and, and feel what it's like to run ultralight. Uh, but we always make sure that we have a backup system in place for emergencies. And some of the key aspects or things that I'm carrying in addition to that is a small pack. It's easy to access for students or another instructor. And that'd be our sat phone. So we got a sat phone here all dialed in, ready to go. And that's for emergencies in case something goes really wrong. There's no cell signal in this stretch of Utah. So where we're at, uh, we run with what we got. So we got that, we got a little backup blade. A lot of times we're improvising things in the field. So students learn to make expediency blades, make cordage and make the other tools they're gonna to use. But in a pinch, when there's something real bad going on, we get a knife going on if that's needed. We have maps because if you're traveling remote like this, you wanna have a backup guidance system for uh, in case instructors go down, you wanna be able to get people out. And we have a, a nice size first aid kit, and this one has uh, everything from EpiPens to other sorts of meds and first aid essentials that we need uh, to take care of stuff in the backcountry. And if you want to take a, you know, to really be able to utilize a kit like this, you need to have wilderness first aid training. So I recommend you take a course through us or someone else. And we just have a little pack that helps us to keep this more accessible for students or for the other instructor um, if we need to get it at it on one of these trips. So this is our main kit. We got our instructor kit here with the back emergency backups and we got our main student kits. This is what we're carrying and I love it. Now, when you can learn to move lighter on the landscape and have minimal kit and learn how to use those kits uh, in ways that make things more efficient and fun and safe, uh, it's just a blast to be able to move on the light on the back country. So we'll check you guys later. Mm -hmm.